Hey everybody, Adam Savage here and I'm at the Udvar Hazy Wing of the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Uh, and I just had to take a moment to visit an old friend. This is the Space Shuttle Discovery. There's so much, there's like so much that like bubbles up in my mind just seeing this again. But I like to talk about the fact that when you look at NASA equipment up close, it's really clear that people built it. It's really clear that most of the things you're looking at are one-offs built for a specific situation. And the space shuttles are no different, even though we grew up with them all having the same form factor. When you see one up close and you see the damage it took exiting and entering our atmosphere repeatedly, you see its age, you see the marks, the witness marks of its history on it. And it just drives home how insane and incredible the whole space shuttle program is. It is my lifelong dream to have a shuttle tile in my collection. I go on eBay every now and then, I still haven't pulled the trigger. I just love the scale. It's both more giant and way tinier than I thought at the same time. And I don't know how to explain it. It's just that I really, really recommend that if you are anywhere near one of the space shuttles, you get yourself over to it and walk around it because it is a really, truly unique experience. So this is the front landing gear of Space Shuttle Discovery. And I don't know why this gives me a kick, but what you can see here is, you see these, uh, these two parts here that are like this? Yep. Okay, so when the landing gear retracts, it goes up and it connects to those, right? And you can see how once it hits them, they close and lock around it. That is like, there's like a mechanism in the door of one of my old cars that's just like that. But that's the mechanical mechanism for holding the landing gear up in the shuttle. I don't know why that thrills me. Of course they would have come up with some mechanical solution to hold it securely. And yet the fact that I can parse it feels weirdly accessible. Hanging from this yellow gantry is uh, one of the Canada arms. These are the robotic arms made for the shuttle's payload bay, uh, built by Canada. Uh, and like when you've seen astronauts out at the end of the robotic arm working on the, the Hubble, et cetera, they're out at the end of an identical arm. But there's this fact about the Canada arm, which I really, really love, because Canadians are super proud of the Canada arm, as they well should be. But there's this funny thing that when you mention the space shuttle program to a Canadian, it feels like it's almost required because they all go, the Canada arm, as soon as you say space shuttle program. And that's national pride and I totally appreciate it. That's the door. That's how you get in the shuttle. That's how you get back out. I mean, just standing here and looking how weathered it is, how beat to crap. Uh, and then above it, the Discovery logo, which obviously having worked for the Discovery Channel for coming on 20 years, I like have nostalgia about, even though it's not the Discovery Channel's logo, it feels close enough that I feel some nostalgia. But here's what I really dig about it. My producer, Ryan, just pointed this out. You can see clearly that it is like a spray painted stencil. Like there's nothing special about that logo. It's like someone cut it out and someone spray painted and they're like, that's our shuttle. It's done. Send it to space. Again, I don't know why that, that, that the, the mark of the maker, that's what it is. It's the witness mark of the makers. Always to me feels like a hug. It always feels like a connection to the maker. That's what it feels like to me. That's why I feel such a warm feeling about seeing those marks. You can see here this like brand new tile. Like every time the shuttle went up, it came down and every tile got inspected and every tile is unique. There are over 10,000 of them, if I remember correctly, and every single one has a serial number. Now, when I worked on Space Cowboys, and I know I always talk about Space Cowboys when I'm talking about shuttles, but it's because it's like a super detailed shuttle model. I spent six months eating, sleeping, and breathing. But we carved all 10,000 tiles into our shuttle. NASA gave us orthographic tile layouts, and we scribed, seriously, every single one. And then we had dry transfers, and we put a little fake serial number on every single tile. I'm not kidding. It wasn't a different serial number. It was the same one on all of them because no one's going to notice. But seriously, we put a serial number on every damn one. The leading edge of the wing here is one of the key issues we had on Space Cowboys because uh, normally in a space movie, uh, you would build different parts of the model that you needed for different kinds of shots. But because Clint Eastwood likes to work with a low budget, our space shuttle had to supply all of the special effects shots that they needed for the shuttle in the movie Space Cowboys. So for this re-entry scene in which the front of the wing starts glowing red, uh, 
Steve Gawley was our, our supervisor on that, came up with this idea of using reflective 3M tape on the wing edge, this like, which has this kind of gray quality, uh, airbrushing it to do the weathering. And because it was retro reflective, what they then did was they put a dimmable red light right behind the lens and they could tune using the reflective tape, the wing looking like it was glowing from the heat of re-entry. It was a practical effect, there was no CG, and it looked absolutely perfect.